Okay, so after learning various kind of analysis like uh, or DC, transient, and AC, let us now uh, turn our attention to the concept of sub-circuit. And this is one of the important concepts in SPICE. This is just like consider the case that the case when you have to say perform factorial calculation a number of times. So what you do in C is that, or any high level language is that you write a function and call that function and again and again to perform the task uh, at hand or factorial. So let's open the circuit to the state. Suppose that you have a number of inverters or chain of inverter or anything like an op amp. So you have four or five op amp in a circuit. So uh, one way will be to, you know, draw the whole circuit and then number each node, a large number of nodes and uh, perform the simulation. But we, we can adopt the same thing as we do in high level programming like C that we can write a function and call that function for inverter or op amp again and again. So let us suppose that in, inside this inverter, this is basically a CMOS inverter, what is I mean, inside when you look drop down in this inverter, so this is what is it is there. Okay, so you can make uh, two kind of symbol. So how many ports are there? One is here, other is here, one is here, one is here. So there are total four nodes or ports, and in this particular circuit, you can see that only two nodes. There are two nodes that is interacting with the outside board. So you can make a symbol like this where these two nodes, this one and this one, will reside inside this symbol. Other way would be to connect power supply right here in this VDD and ground here. So in that case, basically you have chosen to draw it as a four terminal or four port device where you, you need to connect input here, output here and your supply here and your ground here. In this symbol, you are assuming that, okay, I have already been given the ground and the DDD connection. And that thing is already connected inside this, like this, like, like what I have done here. The only thing that the out, outside world is concerned is with the input port and the output port. So let's choose, choose this strategy. You can choose to have this one. And uh, let's introduce you to how to write sub-circuit in a spice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So let's... Uh, Pull up a notepad, and the first line is always a comment line. So, sub circuit for CMOS inverter, and just as you have written a spice file for CMOS inverter, we have to write it here. First line is for sub circuit declaration is dot sub ckt. And name of this function or name of this instantiation, let us call this block as INV or CINV. Okay, so this is CMOS inverter. And then the port name. So the first port I am calling as in, and another port I will be calling as out. So these there are two ports in and out that will interact with the outside world. If you have, if you would have chosen this kind of so symbol, so you would have, you you may need to write uh, VDD as well as ground nodes here because they, that will be four port symbol. So I have chosen only to make two, only two port symbol, so I will do it like this. And then you know the same thing, MP between what are various nodes? So there is a PMOS whose drain is here out, and then gate terminal which is in, then body terminal, sorry, the source terminal, which is this, for PMOS source is connected to the VDD, VDD, and then the bulk, which is which has not been shown here, this means that bulk and source are connected, VDD, and then the model name, let us call it PMOS itself, then L is equal to, okay, right, simply 1 micro and W is equal to uh, 4 micro. Okay, this is just for illustration purpose. Then there is another transistor MN, name of MOSFET is, it starts with M, so I am calling it MN, and its drain is out, gate is again in, and bulk and source both are connected as 0 and 0. And let us call this model as NMOS, 
and L is equal to again 1 micro and W is equal to 2 micro. So, this is all that is here. Now, in my symbol VGD, I am assuming that VGD is already connected inside the ground. So, I have basically a voltage source here which is connected through this. So, let us call that voltage source VGD itself. So, VGD is connected between node VGD and 0 and its value is say 5 volt and then that is it. By default, this is ground, so there is no need to define a separate voltage source for this. And then dot ends. Remember, when you write sub circuit, so you don't have to give any analysis command. I have not given any analysis command because it is just symbol, right? The type of analysis that you are going to perform will be defined by the type of voltage that you have applied here or type of result that you are interested in. So, it is just a circuit. We just grab this circuit here and try to apply, say, DC voltage source or AC voltage source or some time varying source. So depending upon what source you have applied, the type of analysis will vary, right? So, you, we shouldn't, even logically, we shouldn't have any analysis kind here. Only is how, how the circuit elements are connected together. And the last line for sub circuit declaration is dot ends. It is not dot end, it must be dot ends. This is very important that you have to point that you have to remember. Okay. So this way we have already made okay, oh, sorry, I forgot the dot model statement, dot model NMOS and default model NMOS dot model. You can attach your own model using dot and period that I introduced previously. EMOS and EMOS. File save as CMOS uh, underscore IMP and dot SD. Let us save it for for a moment. Ah, sorry, I have over it. Okay, let's for it. So well, th this way we have sub circuit. Now, if I want to write this circuit file, we are assuming that inside this block, this is the inverter. So we can do it like this. There is an inverter. Whenever you have to call a block, you know, so its name will start with X. When you have a sub circuit block, its name will start with letter X. I have X1 here, X2 here. You can call X I N D, X I N D two, something like that. But the name of sub circuit will always start. With X. This is the name of sub circuit. Okay, and this is name of instantiation. So you are calling two inverters. I will call X1 and X2. Okay. So let me write X1 and then one is nodes. So you see that in your sub circuit you have two nodes. First comes the input, then output. So here input is again in and output is N1. And then the name of the sub circuit that is CIMP. So this this statement tells that I am instantiation instantiating or calling a sub circuit CINV whose sub circuit file will be located somewhere and its input is N and no output is N1. So there should be one to one correspondence and also note that this in or pin connected to the outside world has nothing to do with in this in. Okay, and then there is second inverter here X2 between node. Its input node first, according to our definition, the input node comes first. So input node is here N1. So I will write N1 and then N2, and then the name of the sub circuit that is CIMP, and that is it. And now let us apply some uh, say. Let us say some. DC voltage here, okay. So, B in, we will perform dot DC, okay. So, B in between node in and 0, and its value let us choose 0, then dot DC, B in, and shifting it from 0 to 5 in the steps of 1 millivolt, and dot. File, save. CMOS IMD, let us call it sub circuit and dot SP. 
all files save so this way we have saved our file with this name now go to mts files open cmos inbsb so this is the sub circuit definition here so this line okay and one more thing the first line is always the command line and last line is always dot n and uh, this is sub circuit block okay so this whole thing from this point to this point can can come over this i mean ever we can do it like this control x and if you wanted to control v okay so this you can always do because order doesn't matter na? but all the thing in sub circuit should be intact you cannot you know you put everything here in sub circuit sub circuit is a different routine that is being called here let us press f9